Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Moods. And yes, I'm back with my hip hop CD shelf by shelf overview. This is going to be um, part three and uh, part two of the A's. Uh, now the A's are, this part of the A's is a little bit bigger than the first one. So I'm going to try and get to it. Not really talk about the titles a whole lot. Just kind of show you what's on the shelves and stuff. Um, yeah, so without further ado, let's get right into this so we can get through this at a reasonable time. First couple here might be kind of a pain in the ass as I got to dig around this, uh, these blinds here. But um, first one is uh, Amiri, uh, Vinyl Richie. Um, decent album. I remember picking this one up from undergroundhiphop.com back in the day. I think it might have been like on sale or something like that, and I just kind of grabbed it. But I remember the disc actually being kind of cool for this. Yeah, it's a... It's definitely a vinyl record, but um, decent album. It's a decent album. That's pretty much all I can say about it. It's nothing great, to be honest. All right, so get into some Another Level. Yeah, from the West Coast. Kind of like, uh, you know, the far side kind of deal. It's kind of in the in the uh, realm of that from 1994. Always an album I really enjoyed, man. Um, I originally bought this on tape, and I think I played the shit out of it. Like most of my tapes from that era, I have no idea whatever happened to them. So, uh, but yeah, another level, really dope album. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, Ant Banks sitting on something fat. One of my favorite all time, all time favorite um, producer slash MCs. I'm a huge Dangerous Crew fan. Short Dog's one of my all time favorites. I love Ant Banks production. This album is just phenomenal. It's kind of a shame that he packed it in in the early 2000s. Basically saying that he was he didn't like the way he rapped and you know, he was uh, kind of embarrassed the way he rapped and shit. And I was like, ah, fuck, whatever. Fits, man. Um, the Big Badass. Fucking amazing album, man. Love this record. With a passion. Parlin' with Goldie. Misami. Good shit, man. Love that record. Classic to myself. Uh, Do or Die from, when did this one come? 90, I think it was 95, something like that. It's a decent album. You know, it's, uh, I don't know. It's not my favorite Ant Banks production. And like um, Big Things, which kind of played out more of like a producer album, really. If you look at uh, all the features that are on there. Got some slick to pwn on there, man. Really good features. You know, it's it's it has its moments. Like West Riding's really cool with King T and Spice One. Um, I like the song. Too Short and Nice Cube. Big Things. That's some ain't nothing but a word to me shit right there. And then uh, he started up a group here with Rap and Forte and Captain Save Him um, and did an album called Dirty Work. Um, this was better than the second album. Uh, I'm trying to remember. Yeah, he's actually, this is when he recons, recons um, you know, kind of hooked back up with Pooh Man because, you know, they, of course they had their beefs and shit like that. Uh, you know, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty decent. I definitely like this one. And then they did a follow-up record lead the way with dollar will um after rapping forte um dollar will's over here uh left the group i'm not even sure why he left the group but he was replaced by dollar will and uh yeah this one is just ridiculous like look how many features every song on this whole record i think has a feature or even two record or features it's kind of ridiculous but i mean if you look at the lineup i mean if you're a fan of west coast hip-hop there's going to be probably somebody on there that you love i love it you know the last track man me and ski with the a ski man i wish he ski had done more stuff man he was such a dope producer slash rhymer but uh then we got uh antex suburban etiquette really dope record from 1991 from tough crew here's one i never hear people talk about i really highly recommend this record it's really dope good 91 shit uh antim c um it's free but it's not cheap I think this was on Mush, to be honest. Yeah, it was like on Mush Records. Um, yeah, it's been a while since I've listened to that, man, to be honest. Um, Annie Pop Consortium. Very odd group. Very odd group. This is a group that, like, I sometimes I feel like I could get into, and other times I really couldn't, but I don't know. It's not really my thing, but, you know, they're okay. Uh, Apache, uh, rest in peace to Apache. Gangsta Bitch from the Flava Unit. Look at that. Look at track six. Kill the white people. That's some gangsta shit right there, man. I liked Apache. I like this record, man. I thought it was pretty dope. 
Um, then we got Apache Indian, which is more of like just a dance hall type record, no reservations. Uh, I've, I've talked about dance hall music. It's not really my favorite, but it's in here. It is what it is. It's probably like a 10 second, 10 sec cents pickup. Getting into some Apathy records. Uh, Where's your album? Uh, this is like his first, you know, it, technically mixtape. It's not an album. Hence the title, Where's Your Album, but it's more of a mixtape. But, you know, you'll recognize some of the beats on there. It's early apathy, um, solo apathy, I should say. Then we got some apathy, Eastern philosophy. Um, this is dope, man. It's really good. The sample on a thousand grams. Everybody will recognize that sample, the vocal sample on there. Um, it's good, man. Self title on there, of course. Makes sense. Then we got Baptisms by Fire. Uh, definitely kind of like more of a more of a mixtape type deal i mean there's 28 tracks on here it's pretty much what it is yeah apathy was doing a little bit of that earlier in his career then they did the uh the no place like chrome record apathy and self-titled um under that monger before uh moniker before they put out uh, their demigod stuff what year did this album go in 2007 shit was it before with the first demigods no it wasn't Shit, I can't remember the dates right now. But anyways, it doesn't really matter. But this isn't uh, under the demigods, which of course, Ryu is part of the demigods also. So, but yeah, look at that. Fill the agony on there. It's dope. Yeah, Jay Z, man, love me some Jay Zone. Then uh, Honky Kong, it's a fantastic record, man. Really, really good stuff. Um, oh, see some Blackest down on there. Rest in peace to Blackest down. Oh, just absolutely gutted by his death. Black Sabbath is one of my favorite albums of the last uh, millennium, or since the 2000s have started. Um, yeah, this is a really good album, man. A lot of really great tracks on here. Good features. Action Bronson when he was still kind of making really good stuff. Got some esoteric. Look at that. Mad Line and, and Steel from Smith & Wesson. Got Slain, Ill Bill, Vinny Paz. Army of the Gods. Um, and we got some uh, Weekend at the, at the Cape. Uh, it's decent. It's, it's, you know, it's good. I wouldn't say it's phenomenal apathy, but it's okay. Kind of like, um, handshakes with, handshakes with snakes. I think this one's came out, came out about the same time. It's apathy. I'm always a big apathy fan when it comes to the microphone. Ah, uh, this is his new one, The Widow's Son. Yeah, it's called The Widow's Son, right? Yeah. <laughs> or it's not as, not as new as newest one, but. One of his latest ones, I should say. I, I really enjoyed this, man. This was good stuff. Yeah, Apathy's doing... He's more doing the realtor thing right now, which is good. Good for him. Get that Get that money. Uh, it's the bootleg, motherfuckers. Volume 1. Double disc. I like these... Uh, con one thing about Apathy, man, is that he has done a million fucking songs in his career. Because he has so many compilation albums with, like, double disc and shit. It's ridiculous. Features and underground stuff. Kind of puts these together. It's the Bootleg Motherfuckers Volume 2. Again, you know, it's pretty long. Double disc, like 38 tracks. It's just ridiculous. These are good. I really like this stuff because it's like compilations of a lot of shit, obviously, that wasn't on albums and throughout the years. And it's the Bootleg Motherfucker Volume 3, Fire Walk With Me. And again, double disc, which is uh, kind of ridiculous. So... A lot of stuff. Here's another compilation, the Alien Tongue. Early, early um, apathy, as you can see, the years, like 97, 94. I think that's kind of what it is, actually. It's between the years, I think, of 94. It's like pretty much all 90s stuff on here. 94 to like 98, 99 type stuff. Pretty cool to hear, you know, apathy from those days. Kind of like, you know, when he was early stuff with uh, Jedi Mind, or with uh, Vinnie Paz and Jedi Mind Tricks and stuff. The Black Lodge. Again, this is like a feature album, a uh, double disc of uh, Apathy's features, which is really cool, man. There's a lot of good stuff on here. Some, when I first picked this up, there was songs on here I'd never even fucking knew that he had done with other people. It was crazy. Pretty cool. And then here's uh, Apathy's brand new album, which I'm, the album title is escaping me right now, which is actually called Where the River Meets the Sea. That's right. This one, it's okay. A um, little bit disappointing. I feel like he at times this feels a little bit forced i don't know why maybe it's the beats wise I'm, I'm not sure but i don't know maybe his head's not fully in the game but who knows it's still pretty decent for what it is uh we got a plus the latch 
key child um you know you know for a, a child rapping or rap album it's pretty good man it's actually not bad i'm pretty sure he didn't write his own rhymes on here but it's you know it's decent for what it is uh a plus of course from uh souls of mischief my last good deed i really enjoy this man i think some of the the solo souls of mischief records are member albums are pretty good actually um you know kind of overlooked a little bit and then here's the uh the, the film mix volume one um mixtape kind of thing good stuff i'm a big fan of of a plus though he's dope all right so getting into the apollo brown stuff which is going to be you know everything apollo brown for the most part is in here uh the reset he started off with the reset which is an amazing producer album super sick yeah this is kind of what the first time i think i ever heard apollo brown and i was just like blown away by this shit man really good production on there then he did a full record with uh, Boog Brown. And that's what he does, man. He does entire albums, one MC, one kind of producer records for the most part. Um, this was good. I like Boog Brown. If you're into female MC, she's um, very conscious. Um, kind of like a bomb idea in a sense. Not the same, but, you know, similar kind of thing. Uh, we got the Daily Bread record, um, which is really dope here. I think it probably open up on the inside here. Yeah, with Hussein Mackey. I like this but yeah so daily bread was an album we did with hussein Mackey, and yeah just they call it daily bread it's kind of self-titled um then we got trophies with uh, oc which i consider this album to be a modern day classic this shit is ridiculously good i know a lot of the beats on fuck that's right it's upside down i think a lot of the beats that were on here were actually from the uh was it the clouds instrumental record i believe it was actually but that made it onto here and oc is one of my personal favorite mcs of all time i think most people know that about me i absolutely love oc he's phenomenal but this is just a great combination really came through uh dice game with um guilty simpson paula brown guilty simpson this is phenomenal oh man this is like some of my favorite guilty right here man it's super sick shit and random acts man oh fuck so so dope man uh then we got blasphemy Apollo Brown and Roscos, like crazy. This is a combination I never expected ever to come out was was Apollo Brown and Roscos, but um, it happened and it was really good because I Roscat Roscas, however you want to say his name, is one of those MCs that, I, in my opinion, has been kind of plagued by shitty production his entire career. An amazing MC, dope ass rapper, and just needed beats, man. This is really good, really really good shit highly recommend this um then we got grandier another uh, paula brown producer album um i don't know if i got the track listing in the middle here oh yeah we do yeah so as you can see all the features pretty much what you kind of expect to see on it it's cool rashid chappelle this is really good too man really really good stuff right here um then he did an album with uh with rapper big poo of course from little brother Words paint pictures. It's a little bit shorter, you know, like nine tracks, but it's still really good. It's still really good stuff. Uh, this was this was a really good album too, man, with Sky Zoo, who I've always, you know, I always every time I talk about Sky Zoo, I'm always like, man, Sky Zoo bores me sometimes. But he has been putting out some really good stuff. I mean, honestly, Sky Zoo's, you know, discography is really good. There's just times I think it's his, I think I came to the conclusion that it's more of his voice, but. He's a really good MC, and this is, you know, really good Apollo Brown beats on there and stuff, so. Uh, then we got Apollo Brown with um, the Detroit, Sincerely Detroit, I think it's called Sincerely Detroit. So this was kind of a cool pro um, project that he did, another producer album, but he did it all with uh, Detroit rappers, and I think there's like 50 different rappers on it, or 48 different MCs, um, all from the um, Detroit area, of course. Um, pretty much everybody, like Soul, like Clear Soul, Forces is on there, to Illa J, to Finale, to Black Milk. I mean, everyone's represented here, with the exception of Eminem. Wouldn't that be crazy if you had Eminem verse for the time this came out? Because this is only a couple years old, really. A few years old, so it's relatively newer. Um, this, I love this record, man. Planet Asia, Paula Brown, Anchovies. Oh, man. Oh, man. And that's one thing about this collection that you'll notice. I have a Paula Brown stuff, or, um, I mean, Planet Asia albums and all over the collection like i probably have less in the planet asia part than i do in the rest of the collection because he did he's worked with so many different producers and a lot of times are just in different spots but but here's a great example um 
this was awesome. And Chovies was great. Uh, this was a very interesting combination too. Joel Ortiz, um, Paula Brown, Mona Lisa. This was actually really good. Joel Ortiz is kind of one of those MCs that's kind of hit and miss with me too. Um, just beat wise and stuff, but I do like some of his solo projects. Um, and I uh, was not a fan of the Slaughterhouse, Slaughterhouse stuff at all, but, but this is good. Really good. I need those good beats. Uh, Shea Noir, um, Apollo Brown. Oh man, this album right here. Shea Noir is so criminally slept on, man. I, I don't know if people are just sleeping on her because she's a female MC, but man, this chick is like, he really good, man. Really, really good. Uh, then we got a group album here, The Left, um, which is just a phenomenal, phenomenal album um, with uh, with Journalist and DJ Soko. I think Journalist 101 and so DJ Soko, I think was the DJ on there. Oh man, this shit is amazing. This is such a dope record. I couldn't recommend this enough. Oh, such a good group album. Then he's got another group called Ugly Heroes, um, which is um, uh, Paula Brown, Verbal Kent, and uh, Red Pill, which is Red Pill. It goes by the name of Chris uh, Orlick now, which I don't know why he changed it. I think I believe that's his real name. But yeah, there you go. So Verbal Kent, Red Pill. Um, really, really, this, this album, the first Ugly Heroes album is phenomenal. Couldn't recommend that enough. And then here's the second Ugly Heroes album. Um, everything in between. Uh, again, you know, it's I, I'm not going to hate on it. It's really good. It's not as good as the first one, but it's still really good. I, I, I really like Red Pill and I really like Verbal Can. Verbal Can kind of takes a lot of shit sometimes. I don't know why. Um, I actually do have... Oh, so here's, well, the latest one, but uh, the Raheem Devon record, uh, Love Sick. It's, um, it's basically more of an R&B record, to be honest but I do dig it. It's got some, you know, it does have some MCs on it with Sky Zoo and stuff. Pretty cool stuff. You know, it's cool to hear like modern R&B like this. I do actually have the Apollo Brown Locksmith record too. It's on vinyl. I just need to grab the CD. And I actually do have this sitting right over here, which is the uh, Apollo Brown Stally record in the long big box, which is ridiculous. I didn't even know this was coming in a big box. I have it sitting over here because it's for obvious reasons. It's not going to fit on the shelf, but... But yeah, so Paula Brown, one of my favorites. I'm, I'm missing some of the instrumental records. I'm, I get hit and miss with those sometimes. Oh yeah, and then here's the Brown Tape, which of course he did the remix of um, 12 Reasons to Die from Ghostface Killer, which I really fucking love. I think I actually like the Apollo Brown Tape more. I know I've had arguments with people. Well, I just didn't really argue. I mean, it's just what you like, right? But uh, I, I, I actually really enjoy this i think he ghostface sounds really interesting over apollo brown beats because it's not really technically his style of beats but but it works it's weird um Abra arabian prince the yeah, anthology 84 to 89 oh my god i could listen to shit all day of course he was associated with nwa but man dude like panic zone and shit man i love these beats i used to throw this on all the time when i was dj man people would always go what the fuck is this man i'm like it's arabian prince man it's good shit. It's really good shit. Um, Army of the Pharaohs, the Torch Papers, the very first one, the one that kind of started it all. I don't think you'll ever see a Army of the Pharaohs record anymore. It seems like pretty much everybody that was ever associated with Army of the Pharaohs doesn't really like Vinnie Paz anymore. It seems like everybody had beef with them, like King Magnetic and Reef, and and everybody just kind of split their own ways. It's kind of interesting, but this is like phenomenal. Really good stuff, man. This is a really good one. Uh, they followed it up with um, Ritual Battle, which is also really good. I thought this was a great follow-up. Lineups are very similar throughout, but there is some changes with guys that were added and a couple guys. I think the second one, I believe, doesn't even have Esoteric on it, where he did, he was on the, he was on four of the five, but for some odd reason, he wasn't on the second one. I think they were recording. It might have been a 7L record at the time. I can't remember. The Unholy Terror which I thought was pretty good too. It's got some moments on here. But you guys know. If you guys are watching these videos, you probably, you probably know what I'm talking about here. Army of the Pharaohs um, in Death Reborn. I thought this one was better than the last one. They put out two in the same year. I felt like these were kind of rushed a little bit, like let's get out some fucking material because it had been a little bit. Um, but yeah, they dropped two of these in the same year. And then there was uh, this one right here too. Heavy Lies the Crown. Army of the Pharaohs. So, yeah. 
and I'm a complete 180 <laughs> into Arrested Development from Army Pharaohs. Um, I don't care what anyone says, man. This is this is classic shit, man. I love this Arrested Development album. It's fucking good, man. It's really good. And actually, I really like the the, uh, the sequel, the follow up too. I know a lot of people didn't really care for this too much. I think it's really dope, man. They're fun records. Good times. Ah, uh, then we got the art dealers. Uh, this is uh, Clive Craven and um, Olaf and Fiswat. I got a shitload of Clive Craven stuff in the collection, but this is really good. I like the art dealers record. It's short. It's only like seven tracks, but it's um, it's actually pretty good. Oh, getting some classic material between a rock and a hard place. The artifacts, man, one of my all-time favorite groups. Elder Sensei, Tame One, on that graph shit. It's just what can I say, man? It's just it's ridiculous, man. Come on with the get down, man. It's classic. It's funny, man. I ma I made a video a long time ago about um, you know sophomore albums that I like better. It's not that I really like that's them more than the first one. I just find myself listening to this one more. To be honest, man, like I probably do end up liking this one a little bit more, but their first album is just, it's flawless to me too. But it's such a shame the Artifacts ever only did the two records, man, because the combination's amazing. They were so good together. It's kind of like Organized Confusion, man. They just did, didn't do enough group records. You know, it's happened to a lot of groups in the 90s. And then we got the um, the Lost Files from uh, Smoke on Records, 89 to 92. Pretty cool to hear some of this stuff on there. It's really rough, but it's, uh, you know, it's definitely worth owning if you're an Artifacts fan, to be honest. You can get it for a good price. I'm not sure if it's still in, I think it actually might still be on the website, to be honest. Um, then we got uh, the Arsonist, As the World Burns. Man, just silly, dude. It's when Freestyle was part of the group and Freestyle was amazing. Q Unique. Oh man, this is such a good record. Oh, I love it, love it. I want to get the reissue that has the um, has the bonus EP on there too, because I don't have that. Yeah, Freestyle left the group here, so we got Jizz and Jizz, Jizz, and uh, Soul Seventy Nine Q Unique, which I love. Q man, Q is such a dope MC. This is really good too. You do notice that there's no freestyle on it though, but you know, I always like this album cover. It's goofy. It's goofy shit. Um, Ash, Asher Roth. I, I picked up this record, like, for some reason, when I first bought this, I thought he was Canadian. I was like, oh, I'll support the Canadian shit. And I didn't really know anything about him. And I learned later that he did this song. What's it called? I love college. And it was like a like kind of a huge, like, I think it was like a huge kind of college type song. But he kind of blew up for a little bit. It's really dorky shit, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. It's pretty dorky album. It's pretty geeky. Um, Asheru and Blue Black. Oh, dude, this album is so good. I, I couldn't stress enough how fucking dope this album is, man. Of the unspoken herd. Oh, it's so good, man. It's so good. Uh, 48 months. Yeah. Good shit. Good shit. Asheru, man. There's a guy I never hear anyone talk about. All right, so getting into the A-Team. Who framed the A-Team? Yeah. AC alone. Abstract rude. That's good shit, man. Uh, who reframed the A team? Easy loan, abstract rude again. It's kind of like the, the follow up there. There's another one here. Lab down under. This one right here, I, man, I gotta I gotta revisit this one. I haven't listened to this record in a long time. I'm a big uh, AC Lone fan and Abstract Rude, so this was a great combination for me, man. I wish they had it done more um, records together. But. So here's a different A team. That in the middle is Chub Rock. Yes, Chub Rock actually had a group called the A team, spelt the way it's spelt. Um, this is really good, man. Like surprisingly, super funky. Super dope. I always liked Chub, Chub Rock, man. And this is an album I feel like nobody seems to know about. <laughs> like, I never have heard anyone talk about this. This is the craziest thing. But yes, Chub Rock, A-Team. Check it out. It's good. If you're a fan of Chub Rock, you should like that. Uh, Automator. Uh, better Tomorrow. Much Better Tomorrow. Man, some of... Oh, my God. This is so dope, man. Some of the cool key shit on here is just phenomenal. It's just amazing shit, dude. It's great. Uh, Lovich, um, original issue. I must, I think I picked this up at Amoeba in San Francisco one time. 
Yeah, that, that's definitely an Amiibo sticker where it says original issue. So I came across this, which I didn't have. Which is pretty cool, man. I love anything Dan the Automator. Automator's dope to me. And then got, want to buy a monkey? <laughs> sure, man. I want to buy a monkey. He doesn't want to buy a monkey. But yeah, Automator. Uh, into some atmosphere. Um, Overcast, which is probably still my favorite atmosphere album. I would say, um, there's so many to choose from. Like, I, I mean, I, if you include Dino Spectrum, which isn't really with I Sell Divine and stuff, um, Dino Spectrum is just ridiculously dope. I love it. But this is more early atmosphere, like late nineties, you know, it's more rapidy rap, um, slug, which I like though, man. It's, it's pretty cool, man. You know, I got spawn. Yeah, it was a different group then, but a little bit more rapidy rap. Um, you got headshots, which is like a compilation of recordings around the time and shit, which is uh, really good, man. It's really good. It's a, you know, like late kind of 90s, early 2000s, like boom bap. It's really good. I really enjoy that. The Lucy Ford EPs, really good shit. Um, I know this one's like super popular with a lot of people. A lot of people love the Lucy Ford EPs. Really good stuff. Uh, God Loves Ugly. Um, really fucking awesome, man. Fuck you, Lucy. This is a great album. Really, really good stuff. Uh, Seven Travels. I always hated this album cover for some reason. I don't know why I just planed it out with the white, but it's good though, man. There's a lot of really good stuff on here. Yeah, the atmosphere out. Fans out there know. Uh, the funny P, um, what is this, part eight? Happy Clown, Bad Dub 8, yes, yeah, is 8. I actually have 9, 10, and 11 actually ordered right now. They just haven't come in, but I've been meaning to get them for a while. And I got them from a, a Canadian seller up to Sog Set. Um, I'm kind of friends with it, actually. He watches my videos, and I remember I bought some off him one time. He's like, yo, are you moods from YouTube? And I was like, yeah. So he actually knew who I was, but uh, I tried to buy from Canadian sellers. But he had them for really good prices, so couldn't pass it up. Um, you can't imagine how much fun we're having. I always love this album cover. Fucking Mohawk just looking like he's having a great ass time. It's good shit. Good album. Uh, to all my friends, the Atmosphere EPs. This is kind of like, it, it's different, man. It's really weird. Like, this one I really didn't even know about for like the longest time, but it came out years ago. I recently picked this up, I think, last year, and I was like, shit, I didn't even know about this. It's kind of weird. Totally bypassed me. Came out like before the... When life gives you lemons, you paint that shit gold. Uh, and and in, like this is when I, I classified the kind of the emo era of atmosphere. Everything changed. Like the story, t I mean, he was storytelling before, but like the beats were very kind of emo-ish and very not. Like I know he, a lot of fans were just like, "What the fuck's he doing with this shit?" I thought this was really cool. Some of the storytelling on here is like tear-inducing. <laughs> like if you want it, if you want that in your hip hop music or not, but it's kind of the way it is. But um the family sign which was more or less kind of like a like a follow-up to that record it was very much on the same vein beat wise storytelling it, it it felt like leftovers from the previous album to be honest it wasn't even it wasn't even close to as good in my opinion but i still really like it though you know it it, it works after multiple listens man it really does and then we got cell ciders which is still kind of in the vein they were slowly getting away from the emo, but maybe not as much. I, I hate using the word emo. I don't even know why I keep saying that. But it's the only way I can really describe it because it is very emotional shit, though. There's a, some really crazy stories involved in that shit, man. Uh, then we got Fishing Blues. I thought this was really cool. This is a record that they did, like, they did a video for, like, the whole album when they first streamed it or something like that. It was really cool, man. It was, like, them on a boat fishing and shit. I'm pretty sure. Pretty cool. Um, I, I, I enjoyed this. Some of my buddies didn't enjoy this one, but that are big Atmosphere fans. I don't know what the problem is with that album was. Uh, this is kind of a strange EP type thing with uh, with Frida Kahlo. And here's a pound. Really hard to see this. It's like a short little EP thing. It's okay. I didn't really care for it, to be honest. Not really my favorite stuff. Um, my Vita Local. Is that what it's called? Oh my God, I'm totally... Yeah, my Vita Local. My Vita Local. Uh, this was really dope, man. Really enjoyed this record. That was a good kind of comeback record. Not really comeback, but, you know, I really enjoyed it. Different sound. Uh, whenever I enjoyed the shit out of this one, too. This was a really good album, too. 
Yeah, they were slowly. Ants production, you know, over the years is just so diverse, man, from the felt stuff to atmosphere. Like, he's done, you know, the Brother Ali production. He really can change it up. Uh, the Day Before Halloween. Now, this is more of like a concept record. I know they did like a video. This is like the soundtrack to this video that they that they posted and stuff. And I really didn't get it, to be honest. Um, I wasn't a fan of this, to be honest. I can't really get into this. I don't know. It's just not for me. Um, Word. The newest one from um, from the boys. Really good shit. Man, the track with Aesop Rock and MF Doom is so dope. Barricade's fucking so dope. That album cover's busy. It's fucking busy as shit. Uh, getting into some audio too. Oh, man. Love this record. What more can I say? Top billing. Yeah, man. Good job. I gotta get I gotta get their second album, man. I don't know why I don't have it. I used to have it on tape, but I've long gone. And I, you know, it's like a lot of the same story I had them on tape because I really did have a fuckload of tapes back in the day. Because I was kind of like not anti-CD in the 90s, but I I it was just a lot cheaper. So I was buying tapes. Um August Green, you know, super group with Common, Cree Riggins, and uh, Robert Glasper. Um I really enjoyed this. I felt like, like, I don't know what it was about this record. I felt like it went totally under the radar, though. Maybe it's just me that didn't know about it for a while, but I was like, what the fuck is this? I didn't even know this came out until, like, a year later or something. It was very strange. Uh, the Avalanche, Since I Left You, or at the Avalanches, pluralized. Now, this, this album's actually in the Guinness Book of World Records for, like, the most samples. It's kind of like, um, it's instrumental, like, Hip hop infused, like you kind of got to listen to it, man. It's really, it's very unique, man. There's like, I swear, like thousands of samples on this, but very, very cool stuff. Highly recommend this. Very cool, very, very cool record. Uh, a war, um, the laws of nature. I like him, man. Look at that production on there, man. With the alchemist, Jake One, Knots, ridiculous stuff, man. Vanderslice, Sid Roms which is uh, also known as Joey Chavez. For the people that don't know, if you ever see Show Joey Chavez on stuff, he's no known as Sid Roms now. I always remember him from the affiliated days of uh, Battle Axe Records back in the day. M Phases. Shit, dude, this product, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Uh, the Away Team, it's the first record. It's pretty good. It's decent. I think I like this one better, though. I like this album better. Yeah, what is the name? Scars and Stripes, that's right. Good shit, this is a good one. I actually don't really know much about these guys, I just know I have a couple of records. Uh, into some AWOL 1, and uh, Daddy Kev sold out. Good shit, man. AWOL 1, one isn't really for everybody, he's kind of got like a very abstract flow, maybe like offbeat, he kind of, he kind of, changes it up a lot i can see why people don't really dig him but i like a one man he's just fucking unique to me man. um here's another one. Oh shit what am i doing here yeah this is ah oh, man this is a strange record too man pretty cool though pretty cool album really cool album though, actually i can get man i don't know if my camera's focusing properly but is it slanguage Daddy Kev. Yeah, I don't know if you can actually read that, but yeah, maybe it's better on the front. I don't know. I feel like it's uh, Rebirth, man. Good shit, man. It's such a dope album cover. Love that album cover. Uh, Able One. I think it's The Art of War. Or The War of Art. Yeah, that's what it's called. I can't remember all these album titles. This one, obviously, a promo copy. Um, it's been a while since I've listened to that one. I can't remember all that shit. Able One and Factor. Um, he did a bunch of albums. I think he might have done four with Factor. I have three of them. Maybe he did four. I don't know. It's like Quell, man. Quell and Factor did like four or five albums together, and I think I have four of them. But Factor is a Canadian producer who, yeah, likes to do these one MC1 producer albums. This album right here is probably one of my favorites, man. Owl Hours. This is such a dope record, man. Micah 9, Aesop Rock. We've got Tash from the Licks on there. Fucking Exhibit. To Exhibit, man. 
Brains Out is dope track. This is a really good album. Really, really good production for Factor on there. Uh, Able One and Factor Landmark. This is another really good one, too. Factor is one of those underrated producers, man. Yeah, that's right. A mod is on this with Abstract Rude. A mod, like the Amod that we were talking about before back in the day. Isn't that crazy? The hell he came from on that. It's very strange. Um, I think I remember when that album came out, I, I couldn't like figure it out. I was like, that's so is that the same dude? A1 and uh and Deflo from No Sleep Records or from Don't Sleep Records. Um This is really good, man. Sleep is the cousin of death. Really good shit. Really good shit. Right, so we got A1 and Phonics, which I believe are are they the co-owners of the label? I think they are actually. Return of the Golden Era, phenomenal. All these records are really good, man. The actual proof from uh, A1 and Phonics, just really jazzy, smooth, boom bap, hip hop. It's just ridiculously good. Can't say anything bad about these records. Knowledge of Self, A1 and Phonics. They just, they put out really, really quality stuff, man. You don't even have to listen to it to pick it up. And their latest one, Nothing Less, which I love. And I've heard a lot of people say this was actually their favorite one out of the out of their four. I think that's all of them. I think they have four albums. They might have another one. But yeah, this is uh, really, really good. Uh, this is a cool release right here. Alatola, um, live from the, the NPC 60. It's like a triple disc. Um, here we go. Disc one, disc two, disc three instrumental it's really good use a lot of those when i'm making mixes in between filler stuff uh az's do or die yes this is a printed out um cover because i do have the actual disc but my i probably told the story before i can't exactly remember but it, my case got lost in translation but it is the real disc i can't remember i either got it back without the case or some shit i don't remember what i said in the last i, I don't know the point is i had to print out one <laughs> it's ridiculous but then i did actually find one of these so here's an actual, um, this is a European edition, actually. It's pretty cool. It's got some bonus shit on there. So kind of a cool, I guess, side grade upgrade from my printed out one. But yeah, easy, do or die. What can I say, man? It's classic shit, man. Uncut Raw is still my jam. I love Uncut Raw. Uh, AZ, Nine Lives. Dope shit. Yeah, man. AZ, always kind of one of those MCs, maybe in the same category as, um, you know, like a cannabis or whatever. But who's kind of been plagued, maybe Roscos, with an amazing MC, but just really not the greatest beats over the years. AZ's albums, he always puts out solid records. None of them are like phenomenal. There is always misses on his records, but you can't deny lyrically, man, this guy's very, very special, man. I mean, we all as hip hop heads, the first time we heard him on Life's a Bitch, almost fucking, almost puked because it was so good. But Pieces of Man, I, I really like that. And then put out Asiatic, which, um, this is the album format, right? No, I think that actually is the format. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, actually, the album called format. What the fuck am I talking about? I'm stupid right now. I'm really terrible. I'm doing this too. But uh, yeah, the, the, I man, there's some fucking samples and beats on here. I'm just like, oh, they're not that great, man. So, these albums in the middle, man, like the production was really starting to falter hard on these records, man. Um, rest in peace to half a mil. Half a mil is on there. AWOL. Yeah, I mean, here's the format. Fuck, I'm stupid right now. But yeah, the format, of course, was produced by Primo. Um, which is a really dope song. Yeah, I mean, there were some joints on there. So definitely some joints on there. Uh, Undeniable. Man, and then, you know, G or Jay-Z. AZ took such a long time off before he dropped the sequel to Do or Die 2. It was like 10 years, man. Kind of crazy. Uh, the Lost Tapes, Final Call. I, I still need to get those Memphis sessions, man. Fuck. Fucking upside down. Yeah, I got to get the Memphis sessions sometime. It's one one of the only releases I'm missing from his cat. Legendary. Uh, I wouldn't say this album is very legendary, but it has some joints, though. It was okay. And then there was this like very strange release that came out. And obviously, the 15-year anniversary, Do or Die but it has like remixes and like new cuts and it's not really like a, it's not like an anniversary do or die. It's like a totally different, there's like static selector remixes and production and all this kind of weird shit. It's, it's such a strange release. I've never been able to figure that out. All right. So last one up on the A's here is Azim. 
Garage Opera. This guy is, I didn't even know about this dude until like a few years back. I don't know, like I might have known because this album came out in 2000 and I was like, <sighs> I may have maybe through mixtapes or other radios, I don't know. But man, this is really good. I was all, super happy to find this, man. It's really good. Good shit, so. All right, so that is going to conclude and actually in a decent time. So that was only like 40 minutes. I'm actually very impressed that I managed to keep it that because it was a lot more than the first one. But yeah, the, so that's the A's uh, part two. But uh, yeah, shelf three, part two of the A's, however I title it. Uh, then we'll be getting into the B's. I can probably, f I'll do the, the first half of the B's, but the B's is going to be like four parts, man. There's like this whole third shelf is all B's and it goes into the fourth. It's ridiculous, man. So... But uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Leave comments down below. Um, let me know your thoughts on some of the records. If you liked them, if you didn't like them, uh, if you want to know more about them, just just give me some feedback. I'm really not getting any feedback here, um, but uh, just let me know. All right, guys, I will talk to you in part four, the start of the bees. And as usual, man, deuces.